Hey bookworms, welcome back to my channel and welcome if you are new. My name is Antonisha Lachey, I am Mrs. Moody Reader and today we are doing my weekly reading wrap up. Okay, so today's weekly reading wrap up is going to be a tiny bit different. I've only finished one book this week, which is The Alienist by Caleb Carr. We will get to that last because this weekly reading wrap up is really going to be a dedicated book review to that one book because that's the only one I finished. But I did want to mention the books that I'm currently reading and in the middle of, which is probably why I haven't finished anything else because I keep starting new books instead of finishing the ones that I'm already reading. So first one is Leviathan Wakes. Um, I said this is the book club pick for the Interstellar book club this uh, month. I'm on chapter 21 according to story graph that makes me about 38% through. I am loving this book. I'm not going to say anything more about it, but I'm absolutely loving it. Um, I think honestly, if I just sat down and read this, I probably would finish this in one sitting because it is so fast paced and so go, go, go. Um, the only reason why I'm putting it down is because like I'll pick it up on reading sprints or something like that and I'll read however many chapters or pages until the sprint is over. Um, but if I just allow myself to just read it, I probably would just finish it, which I think I might try to do tonight maybe not because I am filming this on Sunday and so starting tomorrow I will be weekly vlogging and I have a whole stack of books to read um but you guys are watching this on Monday but I have a whole stack of books to read for the Breath of the Wild of Thon. so yeah I don't know what I'm gonna do with it but I, I'm gonna get it done but I'm loving it the other two or two books that I'm currently in the middle of are not on my TBR and we all know I have a really like this is this month I have the longest TBR I've ever had. I think I have like maybe 20, 21 books on my TBR, which obviously I'm not going to read all of them. I knew I wasn't. It just gives me more options. But this is the month, I guess maybe coming off of April when I was just mood reading the entire month, I'm still in that mood reading mode. And I'm just wanting to pick up things that are not on my TBR. And I'm just perfectly okay with that. Um, I am. I'm just okay with it because I don't want to force myself to read something just because it's on my TBR or just because it's part of a readathon or something like that and put myself in a reading slump. So I've been picking up stuff like people I've been watching booktube, someone has mentioned something and I'm like, ooh, that sounds good. And I pick it up and I start reading it, which is the case here. Um, I am currently 30% of the way through um, Finlay Donovan is Killing It by L. I think it's Cosimano. Um, Gabby from Gabby Reads has been talking about this book nonstop and then Olivia from Olivia Reads Latte she was just talking about it on a weekly vlog or something and she finished it and she was talking about how hilarious it is which it really is. I've been reading this one for a couple days now I just read it on and off and then um, Olivia just said that the audiobook is really really good so I do have access to the audio on Scribd. Um, I have this checked out from my library but I have the audio on Scribd so I'm gonna listen to it on audio. Um, probably this week I have to do like some major overhaul cleaning and reorganizing in my kids room before I start working on my home office and library so I probably will be listening listening to it on audio while I'm doing some cleaning this week but Finlay Donovan is killing me. I forgot I didn't tell you guys what it's about. It is a mystery but it's like a comedic it's it's funny it's about um Finley Donovan is a single mom of two kids she has a two-year-old son and a four-year-old daughter so two years old and four years old I can completely relate she is has recently gone through a divorce because her husband was cheating on her with their real estate agent and her ex-husband and his new fiance now are just they're they're just real assholes about everything and they're just really purposely trying to make her life difficult so that they can then say she's an unfit mom and file for full custody of the kids but anyways she is a writer and she's not a struggling writer per se because she has had success with with previous books but it's like her current book that she's under contract to write she is just struggling with it she's already received um an advance on the book um and she's blown through it because she's getting behind on her bills because again her ex-husband is just being a real asshole about child support and spousal support and things like that so finley's just really going through it right now so she is 
um, at a Panera at a meeting with her editor and they are talking about her uh, book that she's supposed to be writing and the progress that she's making on it and so she is talking about murder and things like that and a woman at a table nearby overhears them and mistakenly thinks that Finlay is a hit woman a contract killer and so she leaves her a note offering her fifty thousand dollars to kill her husband and yeah things just go from there um it is hilarious because she's trying to convince the the lady that she's not a contract killer but the lady's like like she i don't know how to do this just being really short it's just really really hilarious about how things go and then i'm thinking at some point in time she actually becomes a hit woman i i don't know but i'm like 30 percent through it and i'm loving it right now it's just it's just fun and light which is what i needed after i finished <laughs> the alienist so that's what i'm reading right now and then the other book that i just started yesterday i'm only about 11 percent through is uh clara and the sun by kazuo ishiguro um i'll put a picture up here if i haven't already but i have been waiting i've had this on hold at my library i'm reading ebooks for both of these i've had this on hold at my library for eight weeks and it just now came in um i forgot now who i had seen i'd seen a couple people talking about it a couple months ago and i was like oh i want to read it but i know it is quite different it, there is a bit of a sci-fi element to it but it's a bit different from what i'm used to reading and so i didn't want to buy it or anything and so i put it on hold at the library and it was like the hold is about four weeks and i was like okay fine and then it took eight weeks for it to come in but this book is about um it's about it has sci-fi elements because it's about clara she is an artificial friend so she's not quite a robot but she is but I, i'm assuming that she and all of the artificial friends like look human like they not look human but like they have skin or some kind of covering on them or something but she's an artificial friend and she's not the only one this is just common practice in this society um and i don't know where it's taking place or when but um pretty well to do families will buy artificial friends for their kids um and clara is one of them and she is currently in a shop that sells artificial friends among other things um it's so weird like i i want to say that there's some commentary being made about like why kids why kids aren't being friends with each other um also some commentary about the fact that these artificial friends are for sale in a shop that also sells like teacups and jewelry and stuff like, like honestly like the the image that i have in my head because i'm still at the part of the story when they're in the shop um the art the the image i have in my mind is like a macy's or a belks or jc penny or dillard's or something like that and the artificial friends are like the mannequins like they're spread out around the store with outfits and stuff like that on but people are coming in and there's perfumes and there's clothes and shoes and jewelry and all kinds of stuff in this store and th these artificial friends are there on display but they can move and they can talk and think and all of these other things as well and it's just so weird but we're basically in the head in the mind of clara and she is just she's a very observant artificial friend and she like watches the behavior of the humans outside the glass window and the customers that come in the store um and she's just hopeful that a customer will choose her and buy her and take her home and it's it's just uh, like just from the synopsis it's like um it says it offers a look at our changing world through the eyes of an unforgettable narrator and one that explores the fundamental question what does it mean to love like it's there's just i feel like there's so many layers like i'm only 10 percent in so um i'm definitely looking forward to reading more of it but i feel like maybe even on the first read i may miss some of those layers and things that are going on but it's very interesting so far just from what i'm picking up from the things that clara observes and what how she interprets the things that she observes and the interactions that she has with humans directly and indirectly and how that's going to translate because i'm assuming from what i heard she does get bought by a family and she goes home with the family and how all of that is going to play out so obviously i'll talk more about it once i finish it and i know more about it
So those are the two books that are not on my TBR that I'm currently in the middle of and greatly enjoying. So like I said, my my TBR is pretty shot at this point. I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 books still on my shelf right now that are supposed to get read this month. Obviously, they're not all getting read this month. I will read as many as I can. Um, I'm prioritizing certain ones like book club books and read alongs that I'm doing. But if I don't fully make it through like readathons and stuff like that, I'm not I'm not being bothered with it. I'm enjoying my reading and that's all that matters. So we come to The Alienist, which is the book that I finished this week and um i talked about it a little bit in my top five books i've read this year this was book number two um in that list and i just i have a lot of things to say about this book so i'm kind of making this almost a dedicated review it is going to be spoiler free so i'm not spoiling anything so for those of you who have that have not been following my channel and don't know brief synopsis of this book the alias by caleb carr takes place in 1896 new york we are following a Jack the Ripper style killer who is killing and mutilating um, his victims. Um, the only difference is he, his victims are uh, young boy prostitutes. They are between the ages of about 10 and 12. Um, and there is this group of people who have basically formed a secret task force to investigate these murders and find out what is happening. Um, they are working in secret because in 1896, the field of psychology is still fairly new. So people are very skeptical about psychology and about mental illnesses and different things like that. Um, they don't believe in it. Um, and so they would prefer to act like it doesn't exist. Also, they um, do not want to admit Things like um, child prostitution exist, especially male child prostitution. Um, so they act like it doesn't exist because in, to admit that boy prostitutes exist and that the business is booming the way that it is in this story, they have to admit that the men in their society are paying for these boy prostitutes and enabling this, this industry to thrive. And of course, New York society, high society, all that, they don't want to admit to that. So there's that. So they are operating in secret. So that's a brief synopsis of the book. Um, when I finished reading this book, obviously I gave it five stars. I did go and look at some reviews on Storygraph and on Goodreads. Um, I didn't do too much looking on Goodreads, mostly on Storygraph. And I was, I'm going to put this out and I feel like holding it up. I was... I don't want to say I was disappointed, but I was disappointed by the reviews that I read because this book pretty much I saw very low, like two stars, and then I saw four and a half, five star ratings. There wasn't very much in the middle, and I was disappointed by the two star ratings, but with reading what people wrote, I see why they gave it two stars. But the reason why they gave it two stars, this isn't what they were expecting. And so I do want to talk about who this book is for and who this book is not for. So this particular, this obviously is a book of the month edition, but this is a second edition of this book. This book came out in 92, hold on, give me just a second. This book came out in 1994 and this book was re not republished but uh, a new copy came out with an afterword by the author in 2004 after the book had been turned into the TNT miniseries and the afterword in this book by the author is very very um telling there's a lot of, the, the author obviously wrote it and he gives more of his history of writing and how this book came to be and long story short, this author, he is an historian. He is a military and diplomatic historian. And he, prior to this book, he primarily, or he only wrote nonfiction. He only wrote nonfiction. And he was interested in writing this novel, this fictionalized novel. And he knew that he would have trouble getting his editor and his agent to be on board with it. And so, what he chose to do was he gathered all the he did a lot of research as he normally does with his nonfiction, and he gathered um all of the information the resources because there are real fiction real 
char real historical characters that are in this book, real locations from New York. So you have Mulberry Street where the um, New York City Police Headquarters uh, was. You have Teddy Roosevelt, who is a character in this book, who later on became president. But at the time, he was on the board of con commissioners of the New York City Police Department. You have places like Delmonico's. You have the um, you have the Met. You have the Opera. You have very accurate um, information about New York during this time. So he did a lot of research on that. And what he did is he, because obviously Dr. Chrysler doesn't exist, I, um, he needed a way to make this seem like fiction. Basically, he went to his editor and his agent and he produced all this source material and said, this is the book that he was writing. And they were like, cool, it sounds great, let's do it. And he was like, yeah, but I think I want to novelize this and fictionalize it. And both of the, their first question was, why do you not have enough source material? Are, you know, are your, are your sources or like, um, descendants of the family are they not wanting to participate and be interviewed and he had to explain to his editor and his agent that this was all a work of fiction but in order to get them to even see him um he had to pass it to them as if it was non-fiction and again this is back in the early 90s so you, you couldn't like photoshop and things like that so what he ended up doing is he printed out a picture of Teddy Roosevelt at his presidential desk and then he printed out he found a picture of a man that resembled Dr. Chrysler this fictional character that he created and he basically did his own photoshop where he literally cut out the picture of the man pasted it onto the picture with Teddy Roosevelt's to make it look like this man was sitting in the Oval Office with Teddy Roosevelt and then he made photocopies of it on a like high quality photocopier at a print shop or something. And so he included it and then he put a little caption at the bottom to make it seem like Dr. Chrysler was visiting T Teddy Roosevelt at the White House um, and they were just chit chatting because they were friendly from this case, the secret case that they worked on. And his editor and his agent truly thought that Dr. Chrysler was a real person and that's why they even saw him in the first place and then he had to reveal to them like hey I made this character up this is not real and they were just so taken by the fact that he did this and it seemed so real that they allowed him to go on and work with it so all of that to say a lot of people have had negative opinions because they said that this book seemed too overly researched that was on purpose for one because he was a non-fiction only writer prior to writing this and and also because he had to do it that way to get his editor and his agent to allow him to even work on fiction and move into the fiction sphere but another thing that he says in his afterword that i think people need to be mindful of if you choose to read this book this is not a lot of people were disappointed because they were expecting a typical mystery thriller whodunit type of situation and so they felt like this book was too long it was too dense with all of the history and the research and all of that this is not a whodunit type book this is not your typical mystery thriller where crimes are being committed and most mystery thrillers that i have read and i've been reading them pretty much all my life the killer you meet the killer or the person our protagonist meets the killer at some point in their life whether they are like front and center in the story or whether they're in the background you've met the killer at some point in time in this story or like i said our protagonist has met the killer at some point in time in their past in this book you you've never met the killer you have no clue who they are and it's because the killer themselves even though the killer he is the primary focus of the book he's not and so a lot of people like i said they were wanting a fast-paced mystery thriller whodunit twists and turns and all of that and that's not what this book is this book is a psychological thriller but it is also an examination of the early stages of psychology of forensic psychology of behavioral pro, uh, profiling of um, criminology and forensic science that is what the focus of this book is so i'm actually going to read just a little small excerpt of the afterword by the author 
um, he is talking about um, like his interests in crime and the formation of the mind and he wanted to make a psychological thriller which is what this is and he said um whatever the case the most pressing need was to know why people of such seemingly similar backgrounds could turn out so differently so basically he was focusing on the fact that our main character dr chrysler he had a very rough childhood he had an abusive childhood and so did our killer had a very rough and abusive childhood only our killer grew up to be a killer dr chrysler grew up to be a person hunting killers and so he was saying the most pressing need was to know why people of such seemingly similar backgrounds could turn out so differently this was and remains the point at which for my money most psychological thrillers went wrong they're not really psychological investigations at all but conventionally crafted whodunit what i call narrative crossword puzzles from the first, I was, like most authors, interested in creating something different. In my case, a why done it, a story that could raise hackles, even and especially if you knew who the killer was from early on. What I wanted to do was illustrate critical personal moments in a life or lives that steadily build and reinforce character and thus become the building blocks of action rather than trying to spin another variation on the old dynamic of action leading to character. In short, this is not a who done it. This is a why done it. Like he said, this book is not focused on who the character is in or who the killer is and trying to figure out who the character is. We in this case, we don't know who the killer is from the beginning, but we really don't care because this is this is again early stages of forensic science. This is not like today's where you can't commit a crime because of fingerprints and fibers and DNA and surveillance cameras and social media and all of this stuff. None of this stuff existed then. So they are basically taking the nature of the crimes themselves. So victimology, why the killer chose the specific type of victims, why he or she, in this case it's a he, why he chose the locations where he disposed of the body, why he chose to mutilate the body in certain ways, why he chose to do all these different things, why he chose to kill on a certain day or a certain time of day, all of those are factors in here. But those are the things that behavioral profiling, even modern day behavioral profiling looks at. And it is especially the case, again, when it comes to serial killers um, or where there is lack of physical evidence, it is looking at the crime itself in the victim to figure out who the killer is building a profile of the killer and using that to catch them and that is what they did in here so if you go into this book expecting you know old school like like police um investigative work like with physical evidence and or just a fast pace like someone just using like just the normal power of deduction like this person was here at this time and all that's not what this is this is very very slow burn again it is a very psychological drama and that is who this is for if you are more interested in why someone does what they do which is my interest I am a psychology nut <laughs> through and through then this book is for you if you just want like I said a quick fast mystery thriller like high stakes twists and turns this is not the book for you you will be disappointed you will probably dnf it because you're going to get bogged down in the beginning with all of the whole study of the mind and psychology and things like that so one of the main things that I love so much was that whole why done it feature. I love reading nonfiction because I love learning new things. Um, something that I didn't realize is I love true crime. Well, I know I love true crime and I love watching true crime documentaries. I did not realize that there were so many true crime books out there. Like I've read some here and there, but I'm slowly getting bored with your standard mystery thriller because it's I can predict it like halfway through if not sooner than that and I'm just not really here for it anymore so just a heads up you guys may be seeing more true crime stuff on this channel in the place of mystery thriller obviously I'm getting into sci-fi and fantasy and all that but anyways I just I love learning and that's one of the reasons why I love reading nonfiction is because I learn things like I do learn in fiction as well but that was something that I really loved about this because the, like I said the first half of this book is very textbook style you are learning about 
the early beginnings of psychology and some of the pioneers of psychology across the world and then as it is coming to America you learn a little bit about William James who formed the first psychology laboratory at Harvard back in I think the 1850s and William James was actually a professor of our main character or our main character and our narrator and Teddy Roosevelt took the class they all went to Harvard together so that's how they know each other um but like I said because the author was a non-fiction writer this was his first work of fiction you really get that textbook heavily researched feel some people may not like that in fiction and novels typically I wouldn't because if it was any other genre but because this this almost feels like true crime to me even though it is not I enjoy it I enjoy that whole huge dump of information up front but if you're not the type of person that likes like info dumpy books again this is not the book for you because literally the first half of the book is that way and I didn't I never wanted to quit reading the book but it took me longer to get through the first half of the book because it was so info dumpy but I enjoyed it um and then also again my background in psychology um i took honors psychology and ap psychology when i was in high school i originally applied to college and got accepted to college in the psychology program it was my goal to be a behavioral profiler for the fbi that is what i always wanted to do um even prior so when i graduated high school i didn't go straight to college i went in the military after i graduated high school and um i scored very high on my asvab so i had a choice of whatever job i wanted and i chose to be a crypto linguist so i wanted to learn multiple different languages and then i wanted to do my time in the military i had no intentions of being career military but i wanted to do my time and get those skills as a crypto linguist and then I wanted to go and um, apply to be in the FBI. I wanted to go to Quantico and I wanted to be a behavioral profiler. Criminal Minds to this day is one of my favorite shows of all time if not my favorite show of all time. Um, but that is what I wanted to do. So I love psychology. I love figuring out how the mind works, why people do the things that they do and what um, what things in their life contributed to that a lot of times it starts in your childhood um i've talked about it before on this channel um criminal deviance and like social deviancy like that is something that i'm very fascinated by which is why i love true crime so much um but yeah so having that background made this the perfect book for me but again if you don't have that background or don't have that interest this book i feel would be a very very tough read to get through um and then also if you just don't have a stomach for gore i said it in my one of my videos i had i didn't have trouble it took me longer to get through the first half of the book because it was very heavy like a textbook once i got through it i still had trouble getting through the book not because it was textbook heavy but because it was a lot of body horror and gore it is very very detailed also again because the victims of the serial killer are boy prostitutes and they are the boys are between the ages of 9 and 12 it made it very difficult because i have a 10 year old son i also have two younger sons and so again it is very detailed what he's doing to the bodies um there is a scene where he sends a letter to one of the parents of one of his victims and it is a jack the ripper style letter where He's not quite taunting her but there have been things that have been reported in the newspaper and he's kind of like a let's get this straight type thing and then also taunting her um and knowing that she would take the letter to the police and things like that and then there are scenes towards the end of the book where they are catching him in the act and there is a moment where he outsmarts them and he basically has them tied up and captured and he's making them watch what he's about to do to this boy and there's a very graphic sexual scene it's it's a lot it's a lot but it it was done so well i um this is the first book in a series if i never said that i have the second book um crap, i forgot the name of the second book i think it says it in the back because this is a reprint and i think the second book was out by then um doo -doo -doo. oh i don't know if you can see this this is the picture 
that he kind of photoshopped himself and added it with his source material. So it he made it to look like it was. So this is Teddy Roosevelt here sitting at his um, presidential desk in the Oval Office. And this guy here, I forgot who he said he actually is, but he just happened to find his picture and he uh, fit the description of Dr. Chrysler and he photoshopped it and put this little um, caption to make it look like it was a real news article. Um, I forgot the second book in this series. I will pop a picture of it up here, but I have the second book in this series and I will be reading it soon. And after writing this book, Caleb Carr did go on to write more fiction. Um, and I believe if I'm not mistaken, all of his fiction um, are psychological thrillers and it stars a criminal psychologist as the protagonist or as the main character or as the investigator if you will um the second book in this series obviously continues with dr chrysler and some if not all of the team i'm not sure but then the other books i don't believe dr chrysler is the criminal psychologist in question but they all have criminal psychologists in it so if you are interested in books that have criminal psychologist as the investigator definitely check out Caleb Carr's um fiction and there's some more I think I want to do a video recommending books that have like psychologists or criminal psychologists as your investigator because I'm getting into Nikki French's um Free to Klein series and that was recommended by April at getting Hugo with it. Um, so I'm getting into those and Frida Klein is a psychologist that kind of turns investigator. So anyways, I'm getting off track, but that is all I have to say about The Alienist. Again, I absolutely love this book. It is an amazing book. It is very difficult to read. You have to be the right person to read this book and you have to be in the right state of mind to read this book. So keep that in mind if it is something that you are interested in. But yeah, I absolutely loved it. Like I said, I will be continuing in the second book. This was one of my book of the month five star predictions and that one definitely held up and was five stars. So yeah, I have been rambling on about this book for a while. Um, so that is it for this weekly reading wrap up. Give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you have not already and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.